Hey Mountainside Church, uh, my name is Kevin Dunn and I'm here with Dave Hengen today and, and we're making this quick video to just give you a little bit of information about what's going on um, with our space issues. And uh, just to kind of give a bit of an introduction as to what we've been looking at. Um, if you've been at Mountainside lately, you've probably noticed that we're bursting at the seams. Um, every one of the ministries that we have going on right now from CR to our youth ministries and Kids Cafe, Stevens Ministries, they're all using space. And on Sunday mornings, if you've taken your kids up to Sunday school, you probably notice that there's almost no space left up there for kids to be in. And everyone's feeling the crunch of this space uh, problem. And as a church, we're really focused around our mission of reaching out to the community. Not only do we want to encourage uh, all the people in our church to have a great relationship uh, in that upward direction with God, we also want to be um, being together as a community uh, and in addition to that, we want to be reaching out to the community that is uh, not attending our church right now. And so we think it's really critical that we uh, increase the amount of space we have uh, in order to uh, support those ministries. Now, uh, today we're going to go through and talk a little bit about what some of our options are. Uh, but one of those options is that the building that is just behind our church, the ALO Plumbing Building, um, may be for sale to us. We've talked to the guy who owns it and he is interested in potentially doing a deal with us and so that's kind of our first option that we're going to be looking at but there may be other options that we're going to investigate so uh, let's start by taking a look at how we got to the place we are right now Dave all right thanks Kevin so just a little backstory we started talking informally at the beginning of 2018 around you know eventually we're gonna run a space at mountainside to continue to grow the way we have been growing which is an awesome problem to have um, so we met a few times we kicked around some ideas with a with a small group of people and the building next door came up as an option. This was back in May of 2018. Uh, we went and looked at the building and decided, yeah, we like it, it's good. It was on sale, or it was for sale unofficially for about half a million dollars. Um, and the board decided in August to make a, a move to try to purchase that building. Um, but somewhere between us looking at it and, and us making, getting a board approval to make an offer uh, conditional to congregational approval and financing was uh, another uh, buyer uh, moved in and made an offer that was accepted um, and that's the person we're dealing with now uh, his name is Nels and so we were pretty bummed out that we missed out on that building um, and what we realized is that we need to be more intentional next time and be more proactive and not um, sort of subject to other people's moves uh, and so we decided that it'd be good if we formed a committee that started looking into long-term options for mountainside expansion um, you know if we continue to grow so we're going to pull up a slide here that shows some of our uh, growth projections based on historical growth of attendance where we typically see you know 7% year-over-year growth in attendance and that's just sanctuary space so if you look at the yellow dashed line on this slide you'll see the two service capacity number in Fernie and then if you look at the orange line it shows historical growth so where we are right now and then you know by 2025 say we're gonna be running out of space Again, that's just two services in Fernie using the sanctuary. Like Kevin said, that doesn't really talk about the Sunday school space limitations or being able to host uh, sort of medium-sized functions like CR or Stevens Ministry or youth events. Um, so we went through this needs analysis with this committee in the fall. We started to understand what we need in uh, Mountainside for space, what we need for capacity, if all the ministries we just talked about are continue to be successful for the next 10 years and continue to grow. What does that look like? Uh, and we, we started to build a picture of what a building would have to look like to facilitate all those ministries. And we ended up with a building size around 14,000 square feet. Our current facility is about 6,000 square feet. So you can see that's quite a big difference. And, and then we had a professional estimator do some estimating for us. And we learned right away that, you know, uh, we're looking for just the build, not including land, just building. We're looking at, you know, three to $5 million for a new build. Um, not including land. So we started kicking ourselves in the butt thinking about the building next door that we didn't pull the trigger when we had the opportunity. And so we thought, well, let's just approach the new owner and see if there's anything there. And uh, that's where we led, led to now. So the new owner is, is willing to work with us. They are interested. They see the value in us owning the building next door. Um, the price is six twenty-five, dollars um, $625,000. The, the big hitch for them is that they need to figure out uh, what they're going to do, so they were going to use that uh, building for his business, but he would need to find an alternative uh, solution, so buying land, building a new building, or buying an existing building, whatever that looks like, and we're going to work with them to help them do that. Um, 
but that needs to happen before we can buy the building. But while they're sorting that out, we want to look into fundraising uh, for us to be able to pull the trigger if and when it becomes available. And if not, we'll need to look at other options anyway, so we're going to fundraise for that. So I'll kind of turn it over to Kevin and talk about the fundraising. For sure. So uh, when it comes to financing, there's a couple of different options that we could look at. Uh, obviously, the first one is bank financing. And bank finding, financing works really well when you have a down payment. Uh, and typically for this kind of loan, which it's considered a commercial loan because it's not a residential building, you would need at least 25% down. So that's a fairly good sized chunk of money. Uh, and when we talk about just the building purchase price at 625, that's well over 150,000 that we would have to have just as a down payment um, to, to go through that kind of financing. Uh, and then in addition to that, you need free cash flow. And that means that every month, uh, our giving at Mountainside would have to be more than our expenses, enough to cover whatever it takes to service the debt that's remaining. So if we had you know, financed 75%, we would need uh, a certain amount to cover that uh, mortgage that we would have on the property. Well, unfortunately, Mountainside has not had the financial position where we've had uh, money build up over the last few years. We did have a good size uh, chunk of uh, cash that was in the bank, but we actually used that to really fund our development of the Sparrowwood campus and uh, get things up and running there. And so as a result of that investment, now we're kind of back to the ground zero when it comes to having cash to put down as a down payment. Um, so with that and the fact that every month our budget has kind of been consumed by, um, you know, everything that's given is consumed by our expenses, we don't really have free cash flow. And so going through a bank for financing is not going to work for us. Um, the second option that we have is, is more of what we call private financing. And that's going to be a combination of really three different things. And we're going to be um, providing a card that you can fill in and it's going to ask you for how you might be able to help and, and participate on a couple of these things. Uh, so the first option or the first way you can help um, is actually through a upfront gift. And that would be, what can I do today to help with the down payment amount? Um, and uh, then the second thing that we are asking for is, what can you do over and above your current giving at Mountainside um, as an additional gift that's going to help us to finance the remainder part that we can't do as a down payment. Uh, so that's the second piece. The third piece is do you have the ability or liquidity to actually help finance this project? And so we know that there's probably some people out there who maybe have investments or they have cash that's sitting in an account somewhere um, and they have the ability to maybe loan it to us, uh, loan it to the church so that we can use that money to purchase the building and then through some sort of a, uh, either interest free or doing it as a donation, donating the interest or maybe a small interest rate, um, allow that money to be paid back over time. And uh, it may sound a little crazy, like, like who would be able to do that, but we already have had some interest from some families in the church who say that they can kind of support that. So that's really encouraging and we're hoping that there's going to be more who can step up to the plate and help out with that. But what we're looking at is, is basically trying to find uh, the finances to pay for this building. Uh, and if we include a little bit on top of the 625 in order to do maybe some renovations, uh, that would potentially allow us to use the building uh, in the short term for things like kids ministries and such. So we've put a goal of about 700,000 out there is what we're trying to raise. And 700,000 probably sounds like a lot of money. Um, $700,000 is, you know, for one person is a huge uh, amount of financing. However, if you look at it on a giving unit basis, and we define a giving unit as like either a family or a couple or an individual who would get a tax receipt at the end of the year, um, we're working out to closer to $6,000, $6,500. And our goal, what we'd love to be able to do is actually do this over a two year period. And so if you break that down and say, well, really that equates to like, you know, $3,000, $3,500 a year for each one of our giving units to be above and beyond what we're currently giving, um, in the scale of, of our wealth in a place like Fernie, that, that's actually not too bad. And I know some people are probably thinking like $3,500 a year, that's crazy. Other people are probably thinking $3,500, that's easy. And that's the way it's going to be. If you look at how the spectrum of giving would be in our church, there'll be lots of people who are making a $25 contribution every month over and above their current giving would be huge. Uh, there's some people, this is going to be the first time they've ever even thought about giving or ever even considered it. And this is a great opportunity to, to get involved and to start doing something. And so there'll be a bunch of people who are in that $25 a month or $50 a month where they're like, you know what, we're going to make a sacrifice here. We're going to cut out 
maybe some cable or we're going to get rid of you know um, one of these things we do on a, on a weekly basis cut out a movie once a month whatever it's going to be that's going to allow you to have maybe a little bit more free cash flow uh, to support the project and then there's going to be others who can step forward they can make a big donation on the front end to help us with that down payment and maybe commit to a much larger monthly amount um, one thing that we've, we've talked about as a group is is we would find it um, you know it'd be great if some you had a couple of people walk up and write some big checks and the whole amount was there but it would be even more encouraging and more exciting if we had our whole church on board if everybody got involved and everybody participated and I believe that God would really reward that uh, faithfulness if we're stepping out in faith and taking those um, you know, opportunities to say, I'm going to give sacrificially so that this church can continue to do the missions and continue to reach people, um, that God would really, he would reward that and, and that we would be able to move forward with this building. We'd be able to make some things happen. So we'd ask that you prayerfully consider what you might be able to do. And when you're at church this coming Sunday, these cards will be available to you. You can fill one out and we'd ask you to drop it in, in the offering plate. And that will allow us to plan and look and see what we've got and where we need to get to. Um, and hopefully we can all come together and make this project reality. All right, so we're just gonna uh, talk about some questions that we've gotten at the town hall meeting so far. So the first one is, how would we use the building right away? And our goal is provided we can work through zoning issues, which we met with the mayor and we got some pretty good uh, indications that the zoning isn't gonna be an issue. Um, provided we can sort that all out, then the first thing we'd use the building for is uh, we'd convert to some Sunday school classrooms, uh, as well as a, like a medium-sized youth space. So that would give us immediately um, alleviate some of the pressures we see right now with Sunday school space, as well as give our youth somewhere to be on Friday nights. Um, yeah, Kevin? Yeah, and one thing that people have been concerned about is how much money we're going to spend on this building. Um, and the reality is, is we don't see that that building as its current form is our long-term plan. What we see as being a much greater opportunity is where that building sits in relation to the, our building, where we could actually tear that building down in the future and uh, basically extend the back of our church out to give us more office space, more classroom space and meeting space. And uh, we'd be able to even increase the size of our sanctuary a little bit by pulling it back into what's the current lobby uh, space. So really the answer to the question of how much are we gonna spend on that building is really the, the least amount that we have to to make it functional, safe and comfortable for our kids to be in uh, until we're able to do the much bigger project which is to, to really expand the, the footprint of the building that we're in. That's a really good point. Um, so a lot of people have been asking like what's the long-term plan? So like Kevin kind of touched on it, we would want to use the building as it is uh, for a couple years down. If you recall on that one, uh, the slide we showed the projections of the uh, regular Sunday attendance, I guess you'd call it, when we're going to max out in our current facility. The idea would be to knock that building down, extend our uh, current building, and amalgamate the footprint of the two lots, which is why that property is so uh, good for us to get our hands on if we can. Um, and that whole project, you know, we're talking 20, 25, five to seven years from now, uh, we're looking at about $1.8 million to do that whole project early estimate. So we're not committing to that $1.8 million right now, but that is, you know, would be the logical next step if everything was to work out um, and we're continuing to see growth and we we're able to get the building next door, that that is potentially on the plate for a couple years from now. And, you know, the great news is, is if we do end up acquiring the building next door, and uh, two or three years down the road, we realize that our plans change. Um, there is a big shortage of commercial space in Fernie right now, which is one of the reasons we're in this boat. Um, it's really, really hard to find commercial space. So we know that there'll always be um, a good market to resell that property if we need to, uh, just simply because of the supply and demand of, of space like it. In conclusion, we'd really like to uh, encourage you to, to take a few steps going forward. Um, first of all, pray. Uh, we really want to seek out God's direction on this project and we want you to act in obedience, not act out of guilt and, or act out of fear or act out of anything. We want you to act out of obedience. And so first and foremost, let, let's pray. Um, the second thing is to start prioritizing. What, what is the biggest priority we have? And I think we all recognize that, that our youth in our town and our ministries that we're running uh, are having a huge impact for the gospel and, and for the kingdom of God. And, and so let's, let's figure out what we can prioritize in our life to, to make this uh, all come to be. Um, build that plan around how we're gonna do it and that's part of the putting in the cards that we understand what it is that you're going to be able to do to help us out uh, and whether our church has the, 
the contribution and support that it requires to move forward with this. Um, and then let's all take a step of faith together and see what God can do in this town. Uh, I, I'm super encouraged by some of the early responses we've had from people so far. Uh, and I'm just excited to see what God's going to use this project to do and, and how he's going to shape it and change it for our church in the future. Yeah, so thanks for considering this with us. Thanks for your, uh, spending time watching this video. Um, we appreciate that. And just if you ever have any questions or anything like that, you know, please feel free to reach out to Kevin or myself. Uh, you should see our emails and phone numbers there. And uh, we'd be happy to spend time talking and addressing any other concerns or questions you have uh, just to help you feel comfortable about this or you know, address any issues and concerns you might have.